What is going on everybody? This is AJ from Alpha Pixel and Happy New Year. We are kicking off our first tutorial of the year with five quick and easy workflow tips in Cinema 4D. And we'll throw in a few bonus quick tips as well. So let's go ahead and jump right into number one. The first tip is the active tool button inside the viewport window. And at first glance, this may look insignificant, but it's actually super useful. When it's active, you can actually hold down and it will tell you the last seven tools that you've used in Cinema 4D. Right now, um, I haven't used very many, so really quick here on this model, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna edit this thing super fast. And I am going to use the inner extrude. And then just gonna use the extrude again here. And I'm gonna go ahead and bevel it. And if you're somebody who's flipping back and forth between a lot of tools and, you know, if you don't know those hotkeys already and you have to dig through the menus for those, then this is gonna be a lifesaver because you can see that it has saved the history of the last seven tools that I've used. If I can count right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yep. So just a super helpful little thing um, and it's not really in the way, it's pretty tiny over there. And to get that to appear in your viewport, you can go to mode, view settings in the HUD tab, we have the active tool. You'll see if that turns it on and off there. And again, just super useful and it's mostly out of the way there. So simple, but useful. So moving on to quick tip number two, some of you may already know about this, but the scroll to first active. So I actually have it docked here, but it's in the uh, view options here. And you can go down to scroll first active and S is also the hotkey. So if, if you do use this tool, also know that S is the hotkey, which is also a framing tool within the viewport. So if I just hit S on this, it's gonna frame my object up here, but if I go in here and hit S, it's actually going to jump right to that object. So S is useful, but you have to make sure it's where your mouse is hovering. So if it's in the viewport here, you're going to be looking at the object. If your mouse is in the object manager, it's going to jump to that object. So let's just grab something else here and hit S. Oh, well, it was already visible. So if we folded it all up and did that, hit S, jumps right to it. Just a super useful little thing to, you know, get inside your hierarchies without digging around too much. And again, you may also want to just dock it here. I also docked the fold all, unfold all, just because sometimes I just like to be able to see everything going on in the object manager. So moving right along to quick tip number three, we have the remove unused materials button um, down in the material manager, which you can find under function remove unused materials. So if I go ahead and click that, it's going to take any materials that are not on an object in the object manager and just remove them. And you'll see that often really reduces the clutter in here. If you're someone like me who's just making materials all the time and trying things out, um, it can get pretty messy pretty quick. So having that handy um, of course, it's not difficult to get to, but just having it as a quick click right there is super nice. And right along with that, I have the select all texture tags and objects of active materials. So, for example, if I have, let's zoom out here, and if I want to select objects that have this chrome material, I can hit that, which is also found here, select uh, uh, select texture tags and objects. If I select the chrome and hit that, it will then select any object that has that material on it. Also, again, just a nice way to see what things are applied to what objects, what materials are applied to what objects. It's something I use a lot, but a lot of users might not even know that exists, so just thought I'd bring that up. 
Now, quick tip number four is not something built in to cinema, but it's a plugin made by Nicholas Rosenstein. I hope I said that right. It's a little plugin called Quick Docs, and what it does is it just shows you all of your documents in a list, um, similar to what you have up here in Window, except you don't have to go up there. It's always just visible, and you, you can quickly click between the different scenes you have open, and also you can double click in here and create a new scene if you need to just quick and easy like that and it has the little asterisk there to let you know that you haven't saved the file just nice and helpful um, if you know anything about me or if you haven't can't tell by now I like everything visible and ready to click in the viewport so if you're also one of those people you will love this plugin and he offers it up for free and I'll include a link in the description to the download for that However, if you're more of a hotkey person and don't want that in your viewport, you can, uh, there is an, a function in Cinema that lets you flip between the next and previous projects, but I don't believe by default it has a key setup, a uh, hotkey setup. So if you type in next, um, you'll see next project, and then you can set a shortcut for that to just jump to the next project. And likewise, you can go previous if I can spell, and set a hotkey for that as well. Or you could dock those icons in your viewport and just click them, just as an alternative way. Quick tip number five is the Axis Modification Tool, which again you will see in my viewport right here docked because I use it all the time uh, to center the axis or move the axis in a certain direction. Um, it might actually be easier if I grab a cube here and convert it to editable. If you're not familiar with this tool, what it does is it, it will actually move your axis based on uh, percentage values. So by default with the cube, it's set right in the middle, which might be something that you want. Um, if you did want that, you'd want to set these all to zero and hit execute. Um, of course, it didn't move because that is the center. So if you want it on the bottom, we go negative 100% and it's on the bottom. And then, for example, we could scale it up from there if we wanted to. Um, but if you did want it in the corner, we could put these all to zero, and you'll see it's now right there in the corner. And what's also nice is they have an auto update button here so that we can actually see our adjustments in real time. And there are lots of other modes and options that go along with this. Um, I usually use this for the access tool portion of it and along with that you can use all points you can use selected points selected polygons or edges um, when you're adjusting these values so uh, super useful tool obviously useful enough that I have it docked all the time because I definitely don't like to be adjusting the axis by hand and just really quick another nice thing about the axis center tool is that it does work on multiple objects at the same time. So if you had a bunch of objects and you select them, you can actually move all of their axes and align them. And just really quick, where you find the Axis Center tool in the menus is under Mesh, Axis Center, and right at the top there, Axis Center will bring you this menu. Now that is five, but like I said, we've got a couple of bonus tips here, and, and this one actually kind of surprised me. I had no idea this was a thing that you could do with the interface. So I'll demonstrate this on the one that I use it on the most, which is the brush tool. So if we go ahead and I'm just going to get rid of this cube for a second, and I guess I'll add a plane. Didn't really use much of that headphone, but that's fine. So we'll get the plane, we'll hit convert to editable, and we'll grab the brush tool. I like to use the brush tool a lot when working with projections and things like that. It's just nice and easy to be able to modify things that way. So one thing I hate about these, like say the, for instance, the brush tool is that I'm often switching between modes, you know, trying to smooth things out, readjusting things, and I hate going into this menu right here. So one thing that I found out is if you right click on think any menu in Cinema 4D, or most menus, um, you can right click, select user interface, and you can change the user interface to say something like quick radio tabs. And now you have everything visible and it shows you the active tool as well. So now I can just really quickly uh, use this smear object here and go back to smooth. 
you know, I don't have to be hopping through menus and trying to f- scroll down to find it again. I can just see it all right there and just really quick. Definitely don't want that. I want to smooth that back out. It's just way quicker that way. And also, if you're not familiar with the brush tool, you can middle click and drag up and down for the strength and middle click and drag left and right for the radius. Um, that way also you just saves you another step of having to go into the menu. So quick tip number seven and the final tip. Uh, so the final quick tip here, which is not really much of a tip at all, but just something that I like to do and maybe people haven't thought of is to take that file menu since that's probably one of the most used menus when you know opening closing all that stuff importing um, I've just undocked that and I've docked it up here and saved it into my layout and along with that I just took off a lot of the options that I don't use and just kept you know the standard new document recent files revert to saved all those things and I've also added in the save layout because I like to I'm often changing my layout so I can just really quick just hit save rather than going into the customize uh, commands and trying to find it over here and along with that yeah you can really quick just hit customize commands and edit palettes you can always right click on an icon or anywhere in the menu and also hit customize palettes as well I just thought I'd bring that up as something that I like and throwing it out there for you guys as well. Anytime I can save digging through menus, I will do it. But wait, there's more. I have one more quick tip for you guys. That is to quickly select the hierarchy of any object. For instance, this ear cup here, you can middle click on it and it will select all of its children, including the object. And if you don't want the parent, you can just command or control click on it to deselect it and there you have it just middle mouse click on any object to select its hierarchy of course the other way is to go up into the view or edit tab and hit select children but middle mouse click is much much easier so there it is a few different ways to enhance your workflow and speed things up um, in your daily tasks in Cinema 4D. I'd love to hear if you guys have any other tips on ways to speed up your workflow in Cinema, and if you do, just leave them in the comments below. Potentially help out some of the other users out there. I think we all come across those little nuggets in Cinema 4D that are super helpful, and it's just nice to share those because they're not always so obvious. Anyway, that's gonna do it for me. I hope you guys find these tips useful as we charge into 2019 here. My name is AJ from AlphaPixel, and we will see you guys in the next tutorial.